Welcome back to the channel. Check out this all-wheel drive, full suspension, fat tire e-bike. It has this funky paint job. It's by C-Mace Wheel. It's called the V20. There's a lot to go over, so let's get into it. This bike will come to you as a class three e-bike, which means we should be able to reach speed up to 28 miles an hour via this half twist throttle on our right hand side here, our five levels of pedal assist and our cadence sensor down below. This bike weighs 87 pounds and has a payload capacity of 330 pounds. And the only place you can get this bike is on buybestgear.com. You can purchase it for $16.99 and it comes with a one year warranty. It only comes in this step through version right here and C-Mace Wheel says that the average rider height is going to be from 5'3 to 6'5. And as I mentioned before, it's only going to come in this Miami limited color, which is inspired by the video game Grand Theft Auto 6. C-Mace Wheel says that the V20 will do 37 miles using throttle only or 43 miles using pedal assist. Now, we're probably not going to get that <laughs> because if you've seen any of my videos, you know that I'm going to run this bike through a lot of tests. I'm going to make it climb some hills. We're gonna put it in the sand and we are definitely gonna run this bike through the paces. The V20 has a 48 volt, 750 watt brushless rear hub motor. It has a peak power of 1000 watts and 70 Newton meters of torque. The V20 also has a front hub motor as well. It is also 48 volts, 750 watts with 1000 peak and 70 Newton meters of torque. Combined, this bike provides 2000 watts of peak power and 140 Newton meters of torque. The V20 comes with a seven speed transmission with a Shimano Turney TZ derailleur and the Shimano seven speed thumb shifter. For stopping power, you have the KTET two piston hydraulic brake system and these 180 millimeter super thick rotors. It has a dual crown front fork system with 60 millimeters of travel. There is no preload, nor can you lock it out. It also has a middle shock making this bike full suspension, which has 19 millimeters of travel. The tires are from Chow Yang. They're 20 by 4 inch. They have a medium aggressive mountain bike pattern and they're puncture resistant. When it comes to the battery of this beast, this is a 48 volt, 20 amp hours with 960 watt hours of power with it. You can leave the battery in the bike and charge it right over here is a charging port or you can take one of your two keys and remove it out of the frame and charge it somewhere else. Now to do that, you're going to put your key in here. You're going to turn it. There is a tab right here that you push in and pull the battery out. See, right here is the tab. Then you're gonna take a look. There's your little mounting point right here to make sure that it stays where it needs to be. Put that in there, hear the click, pull out the key, you're good to go. Now it does come with a four amp charger, which means you can charge this battery from zero to 100% in five hours. The bike has a UL certification of 2849, and it is also IPX rated 6.5 which means it can handle high pressures of water from every angle. Additional features include plastic fenders, aluminum pedals, a back rack that can hold 110 pounds, quick release seat post clamp, an overly padded seat that has a light on the back with two different light patterns, and an adjustable stem. Let's talk size and fit. Now the bike itself is 70 inches in length, and let's set this up for your shortest rider. I mean, the seat goes down very far. Now this is an adjustable stem and that can go forward and back to make it for your comfort, but that's what that looks like at its shortest setup. As you can see, I have my adjustable stem back some because I like it better that way. And then we're gonna put this at its highest setting, which is right here. And that is for a very tall rider. That seat is super high. All right, let's go ahead and put it down to what I'm used to. And this is how I'm gonna be writing it today. So with, I'm 225, I'm 5'9", I have a 32 inch inseam, and this is what I'm gonna look like riding this bike today, like this. And then, since it's full suspension, this is how it's gonna bounce around as I hit the bumps. Cockpit operations. On your left hand side, you have a very thin type grip right here. This is your rear brake lever, so this is opposite than what you're used to. This is more like motorcycles. Right here is your rear brake lever. This is your headlight on and off button. These are your turn signal controls. This is your horn, 
and this is your main control pad. To turn the bike on, you're just gonna hold this button right here. As you can see, the screen comes on and it is full color. This is your battery indicator right up here. This tells you which pedal assist level that you are in. This tells you what your speed is. This shows you which motor is working on the bike. Then you have your trip, odometer, max, and average speed. To bounce between these levels right here, you're just gonna hit this button over here on the side. It bounces from your trip, odometer, max, and average speed. To move up and down in pedal assist levels, you're just gonna hit this plus button right here. As you can see, it moves it all the way up into five. And then to drop down in pedal assist levels, well, you're just gonna use your minus button right here. Currently, we are in rear wheel drive. If you wanna switch it to dual drive or front wheel drive, you're just gonna hold this plus button down. And as you can see, it now lit up and it's showing that both motors are going. If you hold it again, it's gonna show that just the front wheel is providing power now. To turn your headlight on, you're just gonna turn that button on right there. That turns your headlight on and this turns it off. I'm a fan of these big motorcycle type headlights. As you can see, it has a nice halo that goes around it and a spotlight in the middle. This is your tail light. This is what it looks like when you turn your brakes on. The bike also has turn signals. You're gonna move that over here to the left. It's gonna activate your left turn signal. That will activate your right turn signal and this in the middle turns them off. And this is what it looks like when the headlight's off and you hit your brakes and your turn signals during the daytime. This bike also has an electronic horn. Oh man, that is loud. Currently your bike will be set into kilometers. Let's go ahead and change that. We're gonna hold the plus and minus button down. And as you can see right here, it has the 01P, which shows kilometers. We're gonna hit this button here on the side real quick. We're gonna change it to one, and then we're gonna hold that button again, and it takes us back to the screen. We need to pop over here to P08. The reason being is the throttle is not set up to work on this bike when it's at a dead stop. So from in here, we're gonna go, and we're gonna set it up to number one, and now our throttle should be good to go. This button right here normally turns the headlight on and off, but they have this separate one over here. So if you hit this button, it will dim the screen and show you that your headlight's on, but your headlight is not on. So just disregard that button. On your right hand side, you have your half twist throttle right here. This is your front brake lever, and this is your thumb throttle. To go up in gear, you're gonna push the little thumb part here, and then to go down in gear, you're just gonna click the lever with your thumb. It is now time where I take this bike out and see how it performs. I do wanna show you what came with the bike as well. When you open this up, it has all your tools and a little air pump, everything that you would need to include a tire patch kit. Now I put flat out in my tires, so I won't be needing any of this, but I just wanted you guys to see, and it looks like you can attach it right here. Let's talk about this trip mileage here real quick. Um, I haven't been able to figure out how to reset the trip mileage and I've tried all kinds of stuff. So I sent an email out to uh, the manufacturer. Hopefully they'll give me that answer. But right now it's gonna show that we're taking off with 4.1 miles. I've got Strava going. Hopefully by the end of this video, I can show us how to reset this trip mileage. We are out here on the beautiful 606 trail here in Chicago. This is where I start off all my reviews. And right now we are riding in pedal assist zero, which means it's not providing any assistance to the bike. It's just riding it as if it is an analog bike. And right now we're cruising at like 12 miles an hour. So that's not bad. I do have it in gear five and it's really not that bad to ride. Now we are gonna test out the throttle. Uh, I have it in pedal assist one. I wanna see if the throttle is dictated to the pedal assist level. Just push it. And right now I have the bike on just using the rear motor. That's how we'll be doing most of the review until it's time for us to test other things. Pedal assist number one, yeah, it is dictated. So we're only doing 10 miles an hour. Let's go ahead and put it in number two. Number two has us at 15 miles an hour. Let's go for three. 18 miles an hour in three, we'll try four. 24 miles an hour with number four and number five. 26 miles an hour in pedal assist number five. Now we're gonna try pedal assist levels. Uh, I put it in pedal assist number one. We got it down into gear three. We're gonna see how that feels. I feel like I had to crank like three or four full rotations before I felt the Pedal assist kick in. We're cruising at 10 miles an hour. Let's try number two. Ooh, I felt that kick right when I hit it. And we're gonna be cruising at 15 miles an hour in pedal assist number two. Let's go for three. Kicking it up again in gear. We're already in gear number seven. 
Pedal assist number three has us at 18 miles an hour. Let's go for four. And in number four, we're already starting to ghost pedal. I'm at the very edge of it, but we are doing 24 miles an hour. And it looks like 25 miles an hour is our top speed by using pedal assist. Let's take a look at the display versus the speedometer. Right now it's showing 18 miles an hour is what we're doing here, but it's showing a mile less on the uh, GPS. So that means our top speeds will be actually one mile less than what it shows on the display. Let's go ahead and knock out some speed tests. I just put this into pedal assist number five. I wanna see how long it's gonna take us to get to top speed using throttle only, let's go. Boom. All right, so it took about 20 seconds. Let's see how quick we can do it using pedal assist. I get it done into gear three, pedal assist number five. We're not gonna use throttle. We're just doing this, let's go. Oh. <laughs> we are jumping up in gear real quick. Boom, in half the time. I just put this into dual drive mode. We have it into pedal assist number five. We're gonna see how fast this thing's gonna get to top speed and what that top speed's gonna be. Let's go. Oh, did you guys hear it spin out? Oh, this thing is, we are cranking quickly now. 30 miles an hour. Yeah, there we go. That's gonna be the max, 30 miles an hour with dual motor. Well, actually 29 because it's showing one mile faster. Since we have it in dual drive, let's go ahead and see how quick I can get it up to top speed by using pedal assist only. We're in pedal assist five, gear four, and ooh, okay, full crank, and then it kicked in. You know, ho, 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 we're climbing, we're climbing. Wow, if you wanna get the most out of this bike, dual drive is the way to do it for sure. One of the nice things is that you can switch from dual mode to front wheel drive to rear wheel drive all while you're riding. Right now, it's got it on front wheel drive and now we put it back to rear wheel drive. That's where we wanna be. So let's head towards the Lakeshore Drive and have some fun. So my initial thoughts on this bike, the uh, full suspension seems to be working pretty good and the seat is gonna be super comfortable or at least it feels like it's gonna be right now it is. I wasn't sure what I was thinking about that but I think I'm gonna be pleasantly surprised. Yeah, going over stuff like that, totally comfortable. Right here, I just used the turn signal. And the bad part is about using the turn signals on this, there's no indication that you have your turn signal on. When you turn on this display, you see that it has the turn signal indicators, but they are not connected to this setup over here. So you're just gonna have to feel it with your fingers to see if it's on or off. Not ideal because of that, I probably won't be using these turn signals at all. To me, they're kind of useless because I don't wanna be that guy that just has my left or right turn signal on for like three miles because I don't know it's on. Full suspension bikes are definitely the way to go when you have hard areas like this that you have to get around. Jumping off the curb. <laughs> One thing about this bike is that it definitely gets a lot of looks with this paint job, which is not a bad thing if you want to stick out in the crowd because this bike will definitely do it. Let's go ahead and do the off-road part of this review. We're going to see how it handles. I mean, this full suspension is definitely doing its job. It feels really good. We're just cutting through. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And you guys saw me go off that one curb. That felt pretty good as well. <laughs> oh, we got a little bit of air. Oh, this is a fun bike. Hey, buddy. That's where it's good to have a nice loud horn. We have made it. It is time for the sand test. We'll put this thing into five. Let's go ahead and put it into all wheel drive. There we go, all wheel drive, pedal system of five. We're gonna see if we can tear through this sand because this is about as loose as sand as you're gonna get. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. We are just going right through it. Ooh, it looks like somebody else has been here. Oh, <laughs> this bike does not want to give up. It is just tearing through this sand and not all sand is created equal. This is about as loose as sand as it could get. And this bike, is just powering through it. I'm not even helping with pedaling. I'm just using throttle only. Yeah, that is, that is freaking awesome. This thing is a monster. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's what I love about all wheel drive bikes. You can make it to the beach. You can go through the beach. You can drag somebody through the beach 
and you'll still be good to go. All right, man, super cool. It has been a while since I've had that much fun doing a sand test. <laughs> now we're gonna head off to this monster hill that I know of. Um, I didn't wanna do it on the normal 15 to 20% grade because we're gonna go into a hill that starts off at 20% and then at the end peaks out at 31% grade or angle or degree or, or whatever it is. It's steep, that's all you need to know. Let's test out the front wheel drive part of this bike and it feels just like it does when you have it on rear wheel drive. Some of them don't, this one does. Yeah, I can't even tell that I have it in the front wheel drive as opposed to rear wheel drive. The only way you can tell is by this indicator on the screen. Let's see how it feels. Let's see how this front wheel drive feels going up this hill. See if I can tell. No, I cannot. So that tells me that this thing is balanced well when it comes to the front and rear motor. Yeah, it felt just fine. All right, let's go back and put it into rear wheel drive because that's how we're doing the review. There we go. When it comes to the mileage test, uh, these tires tell you to inflate them to 30 PSI. You know what, I guess I probably should have done that considering that I have this full suspension, but I have them at 23 PSI. So we might not get as much mileage out of it just because of that. But since this bike is full suspension, now that I think about it, you could just rock that 30 PSI. And this is where it makes it fun. Oh. Here we go. This is a hill for an all-wheel drive bike. Now this is the hill climb. We're gonna quickly hit 20% and then at the very end, it goes to like 31% grade. I've put it into dual drive. It is in pedal assist five and we're gonna throttle up and see if we make it. Let's go. Oh, <laughs> every time I do that, you feel the front wheel and the rear wheel kind of spin out a little bit together. And this thing is just cruising right up this. We're at 14 miles an hour, 13, 11, 10, and without any issue, it made it up no problem. Now we're gonna try it with pedal assist. We're not gonna use any throttle. I put it down into gear five since we're in dual drive and let's see how that works out. Oh, oh you gotta wait for the pedal assist to kick in. Go, kick in. Oh, oh, let's go. Woo. <laughs> All right, now we're going. Uh, it's one of those things that you definitely wanna make sure that you hit a hill like this on a rolling start and it made it up with very little effort at all once it kicked in. Yeah, this is the kind of hills that all all wheel drive bikes will be tested on in the future. Love it. It is time for the brake test. I'm gonna go ahead. I just put it into all wheel drive. We've got pedal assist number five. We're gonna crank this thing up to full speed and slam on the brakes. I just need to remember that the rear brake is on my left hand side. Let's go, let's go. Ooh, this thing is very impressive. We were doing like 29 miles an hour when we did this. 25 feet? This thing stopped that quick? That can't be right. You know what, let's do it again. Here we go with round two. Let's go. Here we go. We were a couple miles too slow. Now we had it at full speed. It stopped right at 35 feet. She still stopped really good, very well controlled. We are down to three bars of battery. So we're gonna go out here for a while before we turn around and come back. Let's go ahead and put it back into rear wheel drive. You know, if I didn't know any better, I would think this thing had a four piston brake system on it, but it does have those thicker rotors on it that definitely have helped stop this bike in a very quick and controlled manner. So far, this bike is impressive and fun as it looks. I have been spending all of this ride in pedal assist number five and in gear seven, and we just dropped down to two bars. So we're gonna go ahead and turn around, figure out how far we're at, we'll do a mileage check. Currently, the display shows that we're at 22.7 miles, but when we started, we had four miles on this bike. So that takes it down to 18 miles. Strava showing we're at 17.51. These are pretty close. So if you were to go out without using a third-party app, you're gonna be able to get pretty close to how far you've gone. Now it's time to head back and see how many miles we can get out of this bike. We do have the advantage now that the wind is at our backs for a change. 
So that's going to help us get more mileage out of this bike. We spent the whole first half just riding into the wind. Even though the full suspension was working pretty good when we took off, it was a little bit stiff. But now that we've done all this stuff with it, it is very comfortable. I mean, I thought it was comfortable before, but then it just kind of, you know, broke in and now it's like super nice. <laughs> this bike's gonna get me in trouble. I know that we have verified the speed on this bike, but it just you just feel like you're going fast. And you feel like you're going even faster whenever you have it in that dual drive mode. I just, I, I feel like this bike is set up really well. It's comfortable, it's powerful, and it's flashy. Let's check out the walk feature. I'm gonna go ahead and drop it into pedal assist zero. Now, if we hold down the minus button, it should help us make it up this hill. And it is, here we go. So there is a walk feature on this and, uh oh, it's taken out a lot of power. We're down to one bar. No, we are way too far away from home for that. We're gonna kick it down into pedal assist three and ride around like that for a while. Some bikes, when it comes to the battery management, once they get lower than 50%, they drop rather quickly. With this being a 20 amp battery, well, I can normally get around 30 miles out of it. So that's what I was kind of guessing on, but I kind of forgot that it is dual motor and we've been doing some serious climbing with this thing and going through the sand. I probably played in the sand longer than I should have, but I mean, it's just so fun with a bike like this. This would also be excellent in the snow. I reviewed all wheel drive bikes in the snow, man, it is just a good time. If you're in an area with like some beachy sand or mountains, this thing's gonna be a good deal. Thank you. The horn is very effective. I am hoping that this is one of those bikes that it will just stay on that one bar forever, but I have a feeling that it is not and that I'm gonna be hurting. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even gonna be near the house. And then I'll end up having to finish pedaling this bike without any power. At that point, I really would have wish I'd had 30 pounds of pressure in the tires. You know, this bike is pretty stable as well as I ride it no-handed. <laughs> Look at that, here they are improving the bike lanes, making them so people can see them more. I'm telling you, Chicago, it is a very bike-friendly city and they are constantly improving. I am so happy we've made it back onto the 606 trail, which means I am 3.3 miles away from the house. I'm just wondering if we're gonna make it. Come on, baby, you can do it. If you decided to just keep this bike in pedal assist number three, well, you would definitely be able to do a lot more miles than what we're getting on this review because this thing is just definitely helping me stretch out what is left of the battery being in that pedal assist number three. And it's actually a comfortable pace to be going. You know, 16 miles an hour, that's decent. I know this battery has to be low, but we don't have any pulsing or anything like that. So I have a feeling that, you know, like with other bikes, yeah, you'll slow down on these pedal assist levels, but it's just gonna give you all the power it has until it can't do it anymore and provide you with assist. You know, the funny thing is I was concerned that we weren't gonna make it and now I'm just using throttle only. And now we've made it to the end of the 606 and we need to turn around and go back. I hate to say it, but I just use my turn signal to turn around and I feel like my turn signal, my left or my right turn signal has been on for miles. This is why I don't uh, like turn signals on bikes where you can't have any kind of indication that they are on. Just as predicted, uh, there is no pulsing or anything like that. This bike is just giving me as much power as it can. You know what, let's try something. I'm gonna put it in all wheel drive while we have this little mount going just to see if I notice any difference. And no, we do not. We don't have enough battery power to uh, make that happen where we feel it. But uh, now we can see that the battery emblem itself is flashing. There's no bar anymore. And it's just giving us the flashing mark, which is fine. We're heading home anyways, because this bike's not really moving that fast. I did get the information on how to reset the mileage. I tried it first to see if it works. And so now I'm just gonna show you how to do it. You're gonna hit this minus button and that top button right there. And then when the screen comes through, well, boom, it'll reset your mileage. 
I have made it back and it is time for my final thoughts. Now I have to tell you that this bike is an absolute good time. It is a beast in the sand. It is a beast on the hill climbings, and I know it would be a beast in the snow. Now, when it came to the mileage on this bike, well, the display showed that we went 43.1 miles, but we started off with 4.1 miles, which really means that the, that the display is showing that the bike went 39 miles. Now, when you take a look at Strava, Strava shows that it went 36.24 miles. Considering that the display was off on what the speedometer was showing, the GPS one, well, I'm going to have to give it to Strava on this taking this bike 36.24 miles. Now think about that. Everything I put this bike through and it still made that distance. I tell you what, if you had it in like pedal assist number three and was just riding it around normal or maybe even four and just having a good time with it but not doing crazy stuff, this bike would have gone, I believe, probably 50 miles just because of how easy this bike was. Now, you know, that those meters are gonna drop but once you get down to that last bar, it will stay there for a long time. A couple of things I wasn't a fan of, uh, the turn signals, only because there's no way for you to tell that they're on. So, I mean, this turn signal can be on, and I believe I had one on for multiple miles without knowing, and there's no way you can tell that it's on unless you just happen to go back there and look, or if you fumble with this to try to make sure it's clicked in the middle. Besides that, you had this other part here underneath this seat where when I would move the bike, I just inadvertently turn on this brake light back here into one of those two different functions. So the only way you're gonna see that is if you happen to look back there. For me, since you have that rear tail light already, I think I'm just gonna take the battery out of this so whenever I pick it up, I don't bump it or turn it on. Speaking of this seat, super comfortable. Matter of fact, this whole thing rode excellent. You know, I thought it felt good in the beginning by the way this suspension was working, but then it kind of like broke in later and then it felt very plush and I am very comfortable on this bike. So if you are taking it for a long distance and going and keeping it in like pedal assist number three, you will be totally comfortable while riding this bike. Now, if you are wanting this bike, I'm gonna go ahead and put a link down in the description below. I also have a discount code for you so that you can save a little money. But that's it. You know what, we did it. We made it to the end and you came along for the ride. So I wanna thank you for watching. And until I see you again, enjoy the ride.